Did you know that one out of every ten people in the world lack access to clean drinking water? Now that may not seem like a lot, but when you consider the population of the earth is seven billion people, that would equate to hundreds of millions of people. Definitely not a good thing. Did you know that the average temperature of the earth has increased approximately one and a half degrees Fahrenheit in the past hundred years? Now again, that may not seem like a lot, may not seem disastrous. However, consider that nine out of ten of the earth's warmest years have occurred since the year 2000. No, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that that's not a good thing. So while we're on the topic of not-so-good things, the American Society of Civil Engineers does a comprehensive analysis of our country's infrastructure here in the U.S. and publishes a report card every four years. Our last report card in 2013 was a D-plus. A D plus. So think back to when you were a kid, you, you came home from school, you pulled your report card out of your jacket, it was all crumpled up, and you said, Mom and Dad, I got a D plus. Now, your parents, I'm sure, they would have been mad, but they would have forgiven you. But when you're talking about the quality and the condition of our country's infrastructure, I think that would signify that we've got a problem. The point I'm trying to make is we've got a lot of problems. And the seriousness of these problems, maybe not today, but in the near future, could put civilization in jeopardy. So I realize at this point I'm probably not a fan favorite here. Probably wondering how can I shut this guy off, he's kind of depressing me. But what I'd like to do is just take a few minutes to introduce myself and tell you how I think that we can solve these problems. <clears throat> My name is Anthony Fasano, and I am a civil engineer. However, I don't practice engineering anymore because I spend my time now inspiring engineers. And I hope that through this talk, I can encourage you to help me inspire the next generation of engineers. So I described to you these problems, and these are just some of the biggest problems. I want to bring to you one solution today. And that solution is one word, engineers. That's it. That's our solution. I believe that if we have enough engineers and enough funding to go with them, we can solve a lot of the world's biggest problems. But it's not that easy. Now, I'm not going to tackle the funding side of the equation here today. There are many great engineering associations that are working on that. But I would like to talk about the production of engineers here in the United States. There's a lack of engineers here in the US compared with other countries. And I believe that one of the reasons for that is because in the US, we have this perception that Engineers are nerds. I don't look like a nerd, do I? No, but seriously, if you were to ask 10 people here in the US, you know, what do you, how do you perceive an engineer? I'm sure a good number of them would say, a male with glasses, with a pocket protector, okay? and of course, with a calculator. But that's just not true. Unfortunately, here in the US, people often push our youth into professions that either garner higher salaries or seem to be more prestigious than engineering, like finance jobs, doctors, lawyers. And don't get me wrong, these jobs are all important, and they are prestigious. 
but they're not going to be the professions that solve the problems that I described to you earlier. In other countries, they refer to engineers with the word engineer before your name, like Engineer Fasano, out of respect and to show the stature of the profession. But we don't do that here in the United States. Why not? Would you believe that 38% of the students that start pursuing a degree in science, technology, engineering, or math finish that degree? And of those, 43% of them do not work in a STEM occupation. We have to do a better job of educating our youth about the exciting challenges in the profession of engineering. When I was a kid, people kept telling me, you're good in math, you're good in science, you should be an engineer. But that's not the only reason we should be engineers. This is the reason. We should ask our youth if they want to be the, the person responsible for taking all the dirty water in the world and making it clean. We should ask them if they want to be the person to design the next biggest bridge or to design the next largest skyscraper. Believe me, I have many colleagues that are brilliant engineers that certainly didn't get straight A's in math and science. In fact, I remember too vividly getting a C in my physics college class. But I went on to be a successful engineer at a young age. We need to change our mindset. Engineers are not nerds. In fact, they're men and women in the military that are out there on the battlefield disarming bombs to keep our troops safe. They're beautiful actresses like Haiti Lamar, who was instrumental in the design of Wi-Fi as an engineer. In fact, engineers come in all backgrounds, all shapes, and all sizes. So I challenge you to instead of just going to our youth and telling them to be doctors or lawyers, to talk to them about the opportunities in engineering. Tell them about the problems they can solve. And tell them that engineers are superheroes. We really are. Tell them that they can save the world, just like Superman or Superwoman. Or any other superhero that they're currently fantasizing about. I realize that the problems that I described to you here today are hard for us to see. Lack of clean water happens mostly in third world countries. We don't see it here. We have clean water here that we can drink today. Global warming is a slow process, relatively speaking. You might laugh at the fact that the temperature of the Earth has risen one and a half degrees Fahrenheit since 1880. But if it continues at that pace, over the next 100 or 200 years, it could be catastrophic. But there is one problem that I described that we can see and maybe even feel here today. Last month, in February of 2016, USA Today reported that 58,000 bridges here in the U.S. were structurally deficient. 58,000. I don't think it takes an engineer to figure out that that's a really bad thing and a really big problem. And God forbid that the earth shake just a little bit 
while you, me, or one of our loved ones happens to be driving over one of these 58,000 structures that are deficient. It can happen. And if we don't inspire the next generation of engineers, we may never solve these problems. Civilization is in jeopardy, but engineers can save us if you inspire them to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.